They threw everything into this movie, and it's a complete mess. But for some reason, I really enjoy it. But this wasn't always the case. This used to be at the bottom of my MCU rankings. But after multiple viewings, the fun of this movie outweighed all of its problems. And there are a lot of problems. Let's jump right in and go over all the stuff they tried to cram into this movie. The main plot is Tony Stark's dark reactor is poisoning him, making Tony act recklessly, including getting drunk once. This is one of Marvel's biggest failures in my opinion. Iron Man's most classic storyline in the comic book, where his alcohol takes over and becomes a big problem, reduced to one night of partying. Some regret in the morning, and then we never see Tony drink again. Anyway, Tony's recklessness leads Rory to go steal the prototype Iron Man suit, and they have a little fight, destroying Tony's house. Because of the party and the fight, Nick Fury pays Tony a little visit, and inspires Tony to look through his dad's old stuff where Tony finds a video of his dad telling him he loves him, and his father's love inspires Tony to go try to save himself, so he just goes ahead and invents a new element. Jarvis says there's no way to create the element, but Tony tries anyway. And wouldn't you know it, even though Jarvis said it was impossible, Tony makes it the first try. And just like that, Tony Stark is cured. But wait, there's more. The government wants Tony to give them the Iron Man suit. They say it's too dangerous in civilian hands. On a side note, the government hearings is where the writers decided to introduce Don Cheadle as Rory, replacing Terrence Howard. And the way they introduce him is brilliant. Rory walks into the courtroom and Tony's surprised to see him. So Rory says to Tony, and the audience, Look, it's me, I'm here, deal with it, let's move on. And it's these hearings, Tony's reckless behavior, and the fight that Rory and Tony have, that leads Rory to take an Iron Man suit to the government, and turn it into War Machine. Now if you're thinking War Machine was the only Marvel character introduced in this movie, you'd be dead wrong. Iron Man 2 is the MCU debut of Black Widow, and she's not a quick cameo like Nick Fury is. No, Natasha Romanoff starts out as Pepper Potts' assistant to get close to Tony and keep an eye on him. And when it's revealed that the Black Widow is working for S.H.I.E.L.D., she stays close to the situation and plays an important part in the end of the movie. And while there's not much character development, Black Widow does show us why she's able to keep up with the Avengers. We're also introduced to Ivan Vanko, one of the villains of the movie. He's a combination of two of Iron Man's supervillains from the comic books. His name, Motivation personality, and suit at the end of the movie are all taken from Iron Man's villain the Crimson Dynamo, and his supervillain name and his whips are taken from Iron Man's villain Whiplash. My guess is, they didn't want to call the villain the Crimson Dynamo, and Whiplash sounds much better. And you can't have a character named Whiplash if he doesn't have any whips. So the story goes, Ivan's daddy didn't like Tony's daddy. So when Ivan's daddy died, Ivan decided to build an arc reactor so he can try to kill or humiliate Tony Stark. And this leads to the scene that I dislike most in the movie, where Happy Hogan repeatedly smashes Ivan Venko into the concrete barrier with his car. 
Banco has no powers or armor on. The man should be dead. But afterwards, he gets up and fights a fully armored Iron Man. Like nothing happened. We also meet the second villain of the story, Justin Hammer. He owns Hammer Industries, an arms dealer and manufacturer, and Tony Stark's business rival. And while he helps Rhodey and the Air Force create War Machine, he's not a good guy. Hammer breaks Vanko out of prison, so that Vanko can help Hammer create his own Iron Man suits. But Vanko double crosses Hammer and makes drones instead of suits. And Vanko uses these drones to attack innocent people and Iron Man and Rhodey, giving us our first faceless CGI army in the Marvel Universe. The first of many. And then they introduce Larry King, played by Stan Lee. And just for fun, they threw Elon Musk into the movie. Now I know what you're thinking. All the stuff in this movie, and they didn't add anything about the Avengers. Well, I'm not done yet. They've got a whole scene devoted to talking about the Avengers. Nick Fury hands Tony a document explaining the Avengers initiative, and then shows him all sorts of images and information about superpowered people including a video of the Incredible Hulk, and then Fury tells Stark that he doesn't pass the psych evaluation, and that they're just going to use him as a consultant. And Tony says no. What was the point of this scene then? Another Easter egg is Agent Coulson finds this thing that looks like Captain America's shield inside Howard Stark's belongings. They play it for a laugh and use it to prop up Tony Stark's element maker. But this is one of the great mysteries of the Marvel Universe for me. What was this thing? I mean, it wasn't Captain America's shield. At the time, that was still on ice. Besides, we know Captain America's shield was just a polished piece of vibranium. Not a piece of plastic with wires wrapped around it. So what was this thing? You know... Even with enough plot lines to fill six movies. As many characters as the original Avengers movie. And setups for future movies. Iron Man 2 is somehow a cohesive, easy to follow fun story. That I don't mind throwing on the TV every once in a while.